so the other thing when we when we talk about fuel is to talk about the fundamental physics right you need to try to understand how the fuel vaporizes how the fuel breaks because if you understand that then that will actually help you design your injection systems and also your combustion chamber right because your fuel comes in you know that the objective is to break it up efficiently and vaporize it as fast as possible in a controllable manner in a predict in a repeatable manner right so you need to <clears throat> spend some time in understanding the fundamental fluid dynamics behind fluid dynamics of these injected fuel droplets and for that <clears throat> people routinely study like fuel break film formation film is basically when the fuel hits the wall it's going to form a wall film right and then vaporization when i talk about vaporization there are so many factors <clears throat> if you remember from the previous video that i showed right you saw that the parcel the the spray was represented by really really small parcels how do those parcels vaporize well what happens if there is a film formation how does that vaporize right so there are so many things you need to think about and only then you can understand the entire spray process comfortably so that you can design something to meet a particular limitation if you find one in the first place <clears throat> how about the intake side on the intake side there are so many decisions you need to make do you have a egr egr stands for exhaust gas recirculation do you have a egr system is there an intercooler then how does the flow how does the air or air plus egr mixture come inside the engine is it a helical port is it a is it a helical or swirl port is it a tumble port what type of a port is it that is a people look at something called as flow bench analysis so that experimentally they can figure out how much what is the angular velocity of the fuel uh, angular velocity of the fluid as it comes through the intake people can actually measure that then you look at more additional concepts because something like valve dynamics remember your valve is what is allowing your air fuel mixture to come inside if it's a carbureted engine or just allowing the air to come inside the engine if it is a direct injection or a port a direct injection engine so in that case the rate at which a valve opens and closes and the valve timings are crucial because that will limit the amount of mass that gets trapped and that will also um, determine the amount of blow by blow by would basically mean leakage right so for example if the valve is closing too late as the piston is moving up some amount of charge can get pushed back through the intake and if your intake has small small leakages you can have some fuel going out of that right so you need to you know understand that because if you're fixing any issue in that system you are improving the overall engine efficiency so what we are trying our concept is very simple previously we knew only five blocks that determined how engine combustion takes place now we already have six and we have few more the more the number of blocks the more the areas where you can find for problems and you can come up with some solution right you are increasing the probability of finding a solution by understanding more about the subject all right so then comes your fuel air mixture and which is what you call as charge condition and you quantify it you quantify it at to quantify it as premixed partially premixed and non premixed an example of a premixed engine is your carburetor engine an example for non premixed engine is your diesel engine and an example for partially premixed engine is your tumble direct injection engine which we saw today like a few minutes back why do we why do we care what type of a mixture is, is it is because it turns out depending upon the mixture the chemical kinetics the chemical pathways that your system takes are going to be different meaning a premixed combustion versus a non premixed combustion would result in totally different um emissions okay it doesn't matter if the i mean even if your equivalence ratio is the same even if your chamber chamber conditions are the same if it's premixed versus non premix the combustion pathways your reaction pathways are completely different and this is called as fuel chemical kinetics people spend a lot of time in understanding this and you need to also try to quantify how the combustion takes place so that is where heat release rate combustion efficiency temperature distribution and local equivalence ratio come in addition to this you can get some performance improvements by understanding wall heat transfer right meaning how much cooling should i provide for my engine if i provide excess cooling then i'm unnecessarily wasting my combustion energy if i provide less cooling then i have i'm i'm basically uh, risking the chance of damaging my engine due engine due to thermal damage correct so so many considerations and 
this is again um, on a grand scale of, I mean, compared to the previous diagram that we had, this is a much more detailed diagram which offers insight into what's happening inside the combustion process, combustion chamber. But this is still a relatively simplified diagram. There are so many blocks. For example, uh, your premix, non premix, and partial premix can be further subdivided, you know, based upon the amount of turbulence that you have, and things would get a little bit more mathematical and analytical at that point. But trying to get that entire picture is what an engineer should strive for as much as possible. Thank you.